Hi y'all, this is Kelsey Gibson again, and I'm here for part three in our little mini series on Psalm one through four. And today I have for you uh, something super fun. Um, you know how Caleb has the story behind the music where they explain how the artist came up with the song? This is your story behind the music for Psalm three by the artist David. We find the story behind the song, the song in 2 Samuel 15. David is on the run, being chased by his own son, Absalom. Absalom wants to kill his dad and become king in his place. For four years, Absalom has been strategically turning the hearts of the Israelites away from David, making them loyal to himself. Every day, Absalom would sit in the city gates. Whenever someone came with a conflict, he would say to them, Oh, that I were judge in the land. Then every man with a dispute or a cause might come to me and I would give him justice. He would give them a kiss and he would make them feel like the king was against them. But Absalom, he was their buddy. Eventually, all of Israel was on team Absalom. David had to run away from his home. He had to hide in the wilderness, taking his immediate family with him in order to protect, to protect them. And that's where we pick up in Psalm 3. It begins like this. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. Four long years, Absalom sat in that gate and indicted his dad. We don't know if his accusations were true or not. We don't know if David really didn't have a man to hear the causes and the cases of the people of Israel, but what we do know is this. Absalom's plan was wildly successful. People like to hear what they wanna hear. After four years, only the most devoted servants were still on Team David. So when David says he has many foes in Psalms 3.1, he's not kidding. In 2 Samuel 15, those against David believed that God was doing to David what he had done to Saul. They believed the lie that we often believe, that if it's hard and people are against us, if it's messy and there's persecution, then God must have removed his blessing or we must have somehow stepped outside of God's will. They believed that God had removed his blessing from David and was now handing the kingdom over to Absalom. That's what it looked like. Why would God allow Absalom so much success if he didn't intend to give him the kingdom? We pick up in verse three, and you just have to love David's faith. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me from his holy hill. Just as David looked to God for his salvation, so must we. This is the first step in becoming a believer, but it's also a step that we must do over and over again. I cried aloud and he answered me from his holy hill, David says. How many times do we see God answer his people from a hill? He answers Abraham and Isaac on that mountaintop Isaac's tied up and God provides a sacrificial ram. Moses on Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments and the re rebellious Israelites down below. And Jesus on the hill of Calvary, once and for all, God's answer to our need for a rescuer. David continues, I lay down and slept. I woke again for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who set themselves against me all around. Psalm 121.4 says, Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. David knew he could rest because God was watching over him. David had been the insomniac shepherd, eyes peeled under a starlit sky, holding the lies of his flock above his own need for some shut-eye. He knew that if he, a boy shepherd, could keep his eyes open for sheep, how much more would God watch over him? David ends with a declaration of faith that should put metal into our very souls. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. You strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. 
Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Ultimately, Jesus fulfills David's call for salvation. He fulfills it for us, and we see it in 1 Corinthians 15, 57 through 58. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. David's faith allowed him to walk through so many trials where people were against him because he knew that at the end of the day, it didn't matter whether people were for him or against him. He knew that God was for him and that's all that mattered. In a similar way, when Jesus walked the earth, he did not entrust himself to man because he knew what was in a man's heart. My prayer for you today is that you would entrust yourself to the Lord, that you would wisely know what is in a man's heart, and that you would put your whole confidence into the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the only one who will not disappoint. Like David said, he is a shield about you. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. He will save you. I pray that today that that would encourage your heart and that you would be able to go through the trials and the tribulations that I can guarantee will come, and that you will stand steadfast, immovable, abounding in every good work in the Lord Jesus.